Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Cardsphere.com, and we'll take a look at them a little bit later on. Our deck list comes to us from Espen, who wanted to see this sort of green Arena Rector deck in action. So we maybe two or three weeks ago played around with this card on the channel, and it did okay if memory serves. You have a handful of very big, very scary planeswalkers that you can go and get if you do manage to sacrifice an arena rector. And in theory, one of these three cards should be able to go and close out the game. The supporting cast for this deck list here is kind of a green sun package, which is honestly mostly going to serve as initial ramp and end game threats. Although we do have some toolboxy stuff in here, including Fiend Artisan, which can be a sacrifice outlet for our Arena Rector. Most of the time, we're going to be looking to sacrifice that with something like a Phyrexian Tower instead, and like we have crop rotations to go and find that consistently. Although there are other ways to get that thing dead in the deck, like sacrificing a creature with Grist. We've got some mana acceleration here, and we also have a Dark Depths and Thespian Stage package. Ooh, neat new art. I haven't seen this one before. Um, that could allow us to create a 2020 creature. So Big Dumb Planeswalker is one of the primary plans, and then kind of slightly unfair land-based synergies uh, is kind of the other side of the equation here. As far as the sideboard goes, uh, deck knows what it wants to fight. Like, it wants to fight graveyard stuff, it wants to fight fast, unfair combo, and it wants to have extra mana versus blue decks, as well as a little bit of removal for permanence. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the games here and see how these feel. If you're new here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing, and if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's one of the easiest ways to support my content for free. If you find you're in the financial position to support me and you find you're watching regularly, uh, please consider doing something like a donation deck list or joining my Discord through YouTube memberships or Patreon. Let's battle. Oh yeah, I am so in for this. So this is going to start with Green Sun for Dryad Arbor to ramp. And that gives us a solid start to the game in terms of mana acceleration. And Arena Rector is going to be the big thing that hopefully wins me this game. Goblin, Ignoble Hierarch. We are probably playing against Food Chain Goblins. Do I have any interesting targets here against that? No. Not this turn anyway. So I just want to have four mana to Arena Rector and sacrifice it next turn, honestly. Um, so let's do that. Pick up a Savannah. Cast Green Sun. Pick up a Hierarch, and do some beats. Gets my opponent for two. Also, apologies, I'm going to have a cough drop in this round. There's some gross pollen -y stuff going on outside, and my throat is not a fan. For sure, sure. That's a snoop. Not a problem. So I will play Rector. Power. Sacrifice Rector. Yes, I lose two mana sources if I do this, but that's probably honestly fine. Let's negative two this. I have a lightning bolt on any future creature that my opponent can play. Sure, sure, sure. You may have your taiga. I have nothing to do with this black mana. And I do think it's worth killing both of my opponent's creatures there. There's third land drop. No play from my opponent. Go ahead and plus Lightning Bolt you. I just want to play a 4-4 Knight, or do I want to just recruit her for another Rector? I think I'm just going to play another Knight. Like, 7 damage per turn cycle is just a 2-turn clock. Yeah, Munitions Expert is fine. You can decrease my loyalty on that creature without it being a real problem for me. I can technically lose the game here to, like, a weird food chain plus squee line. Alright, so my knight is going. That's fine, like, as long as this Ugin sticks around. 
This is still just incredibly strong. Sure. Oh, that is a squee. Squee is spooky. All right. Boon can take another one. Need one more mana. Oh, no, I don't, right? So I would just play Arena Rector. Plus three damage to Arena Rector. Yes. Exiles it. I think this is better. I'm going to go ahead and gain control of the Squee. And then my opponent can't use this to do gross food chain things that accidentally kill me. Yes, you may attack one of my planeswalkers for one. I'm not I'm not blocking. This creature is never getting involved in combat. Unless it's just 100 percent safe for me to do so. Sure. A Kiki Jiki. Not the biggest fan of that. Let's plus on my opponent's taiga, so food chain can't do gross things that I don't like. And let's go ahead and plus continue to Back my opponent's board. Okay, that's good enough for my opponent. This is going to be no or very minimal sideboarding here. Collector Oof is not great. I'm going to replace that with a removal spell. And then it's a question of, like, do I actually want to play something like Force of Vigor, which is narrow, but stops the thing that I'm potentially most scared of? Probably do. Maybe I don't even play Prismatic Ending, and I just play three Force of Vigors. Probably get rid of Ramunap. Maybe an Endurance? Endurance has niche tech of getting rid of a Squee that's in Graveyard. I think I'm just going to ignore that. Turn one this, turn two this, find a Thespian stage, turn three this, turn four, make Dark Depths. I'm just going to confirm that I don't have an Ancient Tomb in the deck list. I don't have an Ancient Tomb in the deck list to speed it up. Um, can I do this a turn sooner? With double crop rotation, I can do this on turn three, right? So, tapped land, crop rotation, get Yavamaya, crop rotation, get stage, dark depths. Okay. Well, this is a hand that dodges that ley line. Another reason, I guess, to have Force of Vigor in. Mm, do I have Maze? Nope. Okay. Let me go ahead and just get that out of the way. All right. How bad is this going to be? Very bad. Very fucking bad. Yeah, that's Muxus. So I take one here and then just eat a Muxus to the face. Um, which honestly could have been worse, but I'm just dead next turn between attack and then sacking the rest of the board. Okay, good game. Let's do something better when I'm on the play. Do I want two more prismatic endings to prevent that sort of thing from happening? Maybe. I don't know what the other cut is. Not like Kaya is insane here. Let's junk the Kaya. Uh, this has no starting mana source. This is an unimpressive hand that would be very bad against Leyline. But I don't know that I want to ship it again. Um, so let's kind of hope that they don't have Leyline or that I draw another combo piece. Alright. My opponent is on four cards. We'll kind of see how this develops. I'm probably not casting anything for my first couple of turns. Nice. Drop a Hierarch. And just cast my Arena Rector next turn. Matron is fine. Just finding another Matron. That's okay. Let's fetch. Guess I didn't technically have to do that. I'll play out a Rector, and then next turn I have Drop Rotation to pick up a Planeswalker off uh, Pyrexian Tower, sacrificing it. Ah, oh, shit, I might die. For not crop rotating for Wasteland. But I think I'm supposed to just go for this. My opponent's on four cards. So they can Matron for Squee and then have infinite red mana. Okay, they're going to get Matron first. Sure. So they Matron. Oh, just for a Muxus. I mean, air, air quotes, just, you know. Because this is also going to effectively provide a whole bunch of mana. 
Um, that was a really bad Moxus. What on earth did they reveal? A uh, bunch of sideboard cards. Okay. Uh, yes, I will use this ability. Uh, yep, okay. They, yep. Skillfully navigated match on uh, my end. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was browsing all of the recently completed trades on Cardsphere.com. It seems like some people are really interested in Optimus Prime Hero for one reason or another. And Cardsphere recently rolled out their marketplace, which allows you to buy cards from other users directly. So if you're in the market for some cards, but you don't necessarily want to pay a lot of money for them or use a big site, consider checking them out. All right. Um, I'm going to keep this hand. And this might not make a, not a lot of sense if you don't know this player, but this player plays Snake and Show relatively religiously. So I'm keeping this because it has a Caracas in a matchup where that is an incredibly potent card. Um, apt land pass. The, okay, we're chilling. Land pass. Next turn I'll make a decently sized Knight of the Reliquary. That's fine. Are we fetching to clear? No. Um, Endurance is a Magic the Gathering card. Grab Savannah. And then buy you with the second one. And drop a Knight of the Reliquary. Good enough for a Force of Will. Take that. Hope I don't get punked by Ancient Tomb. Dodged Ancient Tomb. Now we're chilling. I think this is an end of turn endurance rather than immediate arena rector. Immediate arena rector is interesting versus like Emrakul attack sacrifice. Then I do really cute Kaio shit. But let's just cast an endurance. Nuke that graveyard in case it's relevant. Don't super expect it to be. Do this. Play this so I get more attack damage in this turn. Get for the four. When it goes to 13. And then I'll go ahead and drop a knight into play. Knight represents Arena Rector and Sacrifice next turn. My opponent has flooded out absolutely hardcore. Um what what other stuff does that Kaya do? Okay, no discard mode on there. Probably interested in Nickel Bolas. I guess also technically I can just attack my opponent twice for a whole bunch. They're different interesting green sun target. Wrist kind of. Okay, that did resolve. Go ahead and sacrifice this. Grab Phyrexian Tower. Sacrifice a creature. Yes. Grab Nickel Bolas. Plus... Destroy a non-creature permanent. Technically do this post-combat. Pick up a new Knight of the Reliquary. Just very much make sure that I have lethal next turn. Alright, good stuff. So I have lethal next turn in a way that can also do an Arena Rector if I need to get something weird out of the way. Not really sure that I piloted that one optimally. Carpet's reasonable as ramp. Force of Vigor technically does stuff. Mindbreak Trap is kind of niche. I might trim the Oog in here. Not the best. It can technically answer a sneak attack that's played out. Technically. Not super excited about Collector Oof. Not super excited about Fiend Artisan. Or Ramunap. Or Endurance. That gets me the start of this stuff. I get rid of Endurance. And I need to trim one other card for Force of Vigor. I'm going to trim a Swords to Plowshares. I don't really want to answer my opponent's creatures with Swords to Plowshares. But a lot of times when it's something like an Atraxa or a Drizzlebrand or even an Emrakul, it's just awkward in one capacity or another. Yeah. This is fine. I assume, oh, nope. No turn one cantrip. Sure. Gonna be Yavamaya into Noble Hierarch to start ramping towards Dark Depths doing very disgusting things. Ponder's fine. 
And that was a shuffle. Uh, yeah, I will play a Dark Depths and pass the turn. So I can float two mana, have three total mana, drop rotation for a stage, and attempt to Merit Lodge this turn cycle. Other land drop. Metal's fine. This almost certainly eats a removal spell right here. I believe it is just correct to put my opponent to the test. Okay. Stage. Stage target depths. Keep the one with no counters. Have a brazen borrower? I don't think I can give them another turn. Yeah, that's fine. Just like, given the velocity of my opponent's deck list, I don't think I can wait around. I need the Dryad Arbor out of way here, but pass the turn holding up the mana in case I need to crop rotation, uh, which seems like it's a good choice. All right, let's see which one it is. It's the one that is fucking worst when I bounce it with Caracas, unfortunately. Uh, all right, there's the Lotus Petal that they capped. So here's the remaining things from that. Uh-huh. This sucks for me. I will go ahead and crop rotation. Sacrifice Dryad Arbor. I have to do this. Pick red here. This is most of my life total. My opponent gains a bunch back, making them not be in range of a one-shot Merit Lodge kill anymore. It is annoying for me. That's a bad draw. Let's start doing night stuff. This is a 6-6. Six, six. Like, it's big. But Brainstorm gets a lot of looks at things that kill me. Alright, there's the fetch. The second cantrip. Into a third cantrip. What did that one do? Okay, that one shuffled. Okay. Plan's pretty clear. I need to kill my opponent. What's less clear is whether or not I hold up a knight this turn to get Caracas. I probably have to hold it up. I don't know if I attack for seven this turn. Not quite lethal. Yeah. I, th I think I've got to hold it up. Not a fan of it, and sometimes it doesn't work. But I think I have to hold it up. Great, land drop is what I'm looking for here. So then we'll go ahead and sacrifice this. Find the Caracas. I am happy enough attacking my opponent for 14 here. Need to make sure that I don't uh, accidentally die to Brazen Borrower. A Fury. Annoying, but is happening. Um, it means I can't actually play another knight this turn. That was a reason to play a pre-combat knight. I think I... Uh, do I have to play out the knight now? So that I actually win the race? I get attacked to four. I get attacked to one. I'm going to play this out in the way that gets my opponent dead next turn. I wish I would have thought about mid-combat fury. This has made my life very awkward. Okay, sure. Let's see if I am punished for not doing a pre-combat knight. My opponent has a bunch of red mana, so... Arrakis only goes so far. Okay. Cast one of these for one. Find a Hierarch. This leaves my opponent on a two-turn clock. With Arena Rector, potentially as a pivot plan. There's the Brazen Borrower. Uh, relevant text here, this can only block creatures with flying. Brazen Borrower has been held back. Uh, yep. Yeah. Is that just a bluff? I'm calling. Yep, it was just a bluff. My opponent just kind of thinking I might miss the fact that this can only block flyers. GG's. Alright, um, so this is round three. We're 2-0. and oh. I have some mana ramp in my opening hand here. I do have a crop rotation, which can gain me the ability to sacrifice an arena rector. We're hoping to not be playing against a swords to plowshares deck, so I can just like play out an arena rector and pass the turn. Heritage druids, so we're playing against elves. Got it. 
I don't have any of the super scary lands, like Tabernacle. So I have an Ugin in the not too distant future. What is my other thing that I take? Probably just a Grist. Probably just a Grist. Any anything that can interact with my opponent's board is good. I think I end up playing Arena Rector in passing, and then Grist to sacrifice Arena Rector. Oh, it's the Leaf Crown Visionary build. Uh, this build has two natural orders, if it's the list from the weekend. All right, do I want to play Arena Rector and pass, or do I just want to Grist minus on one of these cards immediately? I'm definitely a little scared. I think I am going to just use this as a removal spell. Back the Recruiter. I think I blow up the thing that can draw cards. Don't need to. Crop Rotation now. Never blocking with Noble Hierarch, so I'm just going to go ahead and make my attack. Possible going after the Heritage Druid there is better. This just gets kind of gross if my opponent has a Cradle. Yep, that's fine. I'm kind of hoping that my opponent now plays out a handful of cards and I just Ugin them away next turn. That's fine. That's more annoying, actually. All right. I have to do a pass a turn line. Not the biggest fan of, but the board is pretty empty here. Okay, there's your insect. We'll see how big... Okay, they're doing a glimpse turn. So I can theoretically die. It would be hard. It would be real hard, but it theoretically can happen. That's three mana. And that's Bounce the Elf. Redeploy. Uh, Green Sun's fine. My opponent takes a bit of a hit here. I'm just going to confirm that Ugin kills everything, right? It's each permanent, yeah. I guess it's free to attack, right? Just a free point of damage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Crop rotation. Back forest. Find tower. Sacrifice rector. Yes. Find Ugin. Ugin negative three. My opponent can bounce an elf and a dryad arbor here. Yep. Yep. That was all expected. Is Knight of the Reliquary the biggest, dumbest thing I have to get here? Probably. Alright, X is three. Grab Knight. Knight can Wasteland Cradle next turn. And I think between Wasteland and Cradle and Lightning Bolting... Any creatures that come down, I'm more or less going to be okay. I also can, like, Ugin minus one relatively comfortably. Oh shit, does my opponent have a natural order? That's rough. That is an 8-8, eight, eight, uh, which is always going to kill Ugin. Uh, that is most unfortunate. How many creatures are in there? One, two, three... I think I'm going and making a new knight, with my plan being to outscale my opponent's crater hoof. So I'm going to knock them off the cradle mana, and now I have something that can block crater hoof. I've knocked them off of Allosaurus Shepherd's activations. I've knocked them, I guess I haven't knocked them off of Natural Order mana, because Quarian Ranger Bounce is a thing. But Atraxa is the other target in this deck list, um, assuming it's the deck list that I think it is. Okay, there is a green sun. It's just a draw card. Just a draw card. In theory, fine. I have Dark Depths Thespian Stage available to me if my opponent does not kill me. I'm going to go ahead and play this out past the turn. Um, notably, I don't have another Wasteland here, so I can't keep attacking mana, so it's just like purely do I beat the three cards that my opponent is going to have. <laughs> Alright, yield to that. 
With the crater hoof already in play, this isn't as scary as it could be. Gonna always yield to that. And the Atraxa doesn't do a lot here. Okay, is that just all there is? Alright, fantastic. Um, my opponent's last card, in theory, could be Endurance. There's Stage. Sacrifice the other one of these. Into Depths. There is some awful noise outside. I apologize if you can hear that. Okay. Copy the one with... Keep the one with no ice counters. Oh, their last card was Boseju. Uh, sure. Up a Savannah, I guess. Alright. I need to go see what this fucking noise is. Okay, I have no idea what this noise is. Uh, it is going to drive me insane. Um, I guess I will just make a Sorcery Speed Merit Lodge. Alright, sacrifice this. Find a stage. Do this. Drop rotation. Find a depths. Do it again. Keep the one with no ice counters. Call it a turn. Oh, I got it stopped. Ugh. Okay, so this is just going to be a six mana Allosaurus Shepherd activation. Uh, sure. Any knight target that saves me? Uh, it doesn't matter, right? Because I don't have a thing to sack. All right. Yeah, I don't have anything that I can sack. Yeah, so I lost this one for making a Sorcery Speed Merit Lodge. Well, I couldn't think. Alright, um, I want Prismatic Endings as extra interaction. Probably cut Ramunap here. Okay, um, I'll keep this hand. I'm going to make this a green... Well, I crop rotation something away. I do kind of want it to be this forest, potentially. Grab Dryad Arbor. Although if I don't fetch Savannah here, some of my goldfish speeds can be a little bit more awkward. Shepherd, that's fine. Let's take that out. Savannah, ending that away. Back for one. Bring my opponent to 19. And if my opponent taps out, I will just sorcery speed, merit lodge. They deal with it. Fine. That's also fine. Turn crop rotation. Back dryad arbor. Find dark depths. There's stage. Stage. Target depths. Keep the one with no ice counters. There's my 2020. They can produce an endurance or a traxa to block that, or they can kill me through 20 toughness. Looks like that's not happening. I don't think I'm making any changes here. Um, yeah, I'll totally keep this hand. It has either turn one interaction or turn one ramp. Both of which are things that I'm theoretically looking for and excited about. Alright, what you got? Visionary. Then I assume you will play an elf of some kind or a green sun for Dryad Arbor, whatever. It's a Dryad Arbor. That's fine. I'm going to assume that when I have the opportunity to interact with my opponent, I just take it because four mana from that deck is very spooky. The cradle. Okay. Follow up one drop. Follow up one drop. Uh, and that's a scary one. I don't think I can keep up with the speed of my opponent's deck here if they have it all. Okay. So next turn they can just natural order me. There's not really anything that I can do about that. Actually, I could wasteland them. I think this looks like this. Green sun for the Dryad Arbor. Crop rotation. Sacrifice the Dryad Arbor. Find the wasteland take out the Cradle so I can't immediately die to Natural Order. My opponent can still go down the, like, Elvish Visionary, Wirewood, Symbiote, Value Train route, but that takes time. 
And if I have time, I get to work towards Arena Rector. Which looking real hot as of right now. Alright. I eat three damage here. And I know Reliquary will be very large. Alright. Put this on human. Drop a knight. Got a 5-5. Five, five. Next turn I sacrifice some land. And then get to Ugin my opponent's board. Um, I have to dodge a death this turn, though. It's pretty hard for me to die unless my opponent has a Cradle. Wrist is annoying. Okay, so Dryad Arbor's going to trade with my Knight. Yep, yep, yep. That is annoying, because unless I draw another land, I have to play out Phyrexian Tower to play Arena Rector. Now I just play both of these other cards instead. So, Hierarch into Knight. Again, have to avoid the unfair side. Assuming I avoid the unfair side, I get a board wipe. Oh, they hit a Wirewood Symbiote to get additional insect tokens with Grist. Okay, sure. Okay. That's going to redeploy the Elvish Visionary. Oh no, there's something else. Endurance. That's fine with me. Actually kind of quite happy that's played out with that timing. Now I know it's here, rather than getting caught by surprise. Alright, I'm at 11. Green card plus endurance would do it. Just show me. Here we go. Power, sacrifice, rector. Yes. Ugin. Um, do I want a different land in play? I probably want to make some small adjustments here. Let's sacrifice the actual factual forest and find half of Dark Depths combo, maybe. I can also just find Wasteland. So let's exile all this stuff, my stuff included. Then I'm going to tag that by you. Bam. My whole goal here is to just try to make it so that my opponent can't immediately reach a natural order and get something that takes Ugin off the table, because Hasty Crater Hoof is probably the only way that Ugin just easily dies. And then I just rely on the top of my deck to do something relevant. There is a Heritage Druid. I probably just have to minus two Ugin and take both of those off the board. Uh, that's, a, that's a very bad draw. Yep, goodbye. Visionary type cards are great for my opponent. Okay, sure. Rangers are fine. Opponent in theory could natural order next turn. I'd like to find something that stops that. I'm not really willing to take the Ugin off the board here. I can die to my opponent's top card. Well, maybe not die. Basically die to my opponent's top card being exactly natural order. I can wipe all of these cards so that doesn't happen and then play a Knight of the Reliquary. But I think I'd rather just disrupt this and keep the Planeswalker. Yep, so then there's the bounce. And I'll drop a Knight. Knight is already back to a 5-5 five five in size. And I can find a Car Caracas, so I beat a Traxa. Crater Hoof would be awkward. Okay, cool. We dodged natural order. Great. Uh, that's leaning another permanent. Oh no, that's gonna find a wirewood. That's fine. Draws aren't very cooperative here. Can I just do this for one. No, I have to do it for two. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to just tutor up dark depths pieces. I think I just attack my opponent. Kind of wish I had more wastelands, but that's not really how this deck is built. All right, visionary grinding occurs. Second visionary, sure. I really would just like a live draw. <laughs> Olas land land. Kind of rough. Natural order is annoying. All right, I'm crashing in. Bonus at nine, I technically have a surprise dryad arbor, right? I have a surprise dryad arbor. 
I have some weird lines like Dryad Arbor, sacrifice it to Phyrexian Tower to put two lands into Graveyard. Yep. Annoying. Alright, so that kills my Ugin. I can't stop that with Dryad Arbor blocks. I'm going to, I think, find Dryad Arbor. Represents more points of damage. Uh, my fourth dead draw in a row. So, do I just hold Knight back so Crater Hoof can't attack and just deal one damage and start pivoting into a Merit Lodge kill? I don't really want to do that because another Bosage or an Endurance just bullies me. I think I attack for six and hold Riot Arbor back to chump Crater Hoof if need be. Knight connects. Knight is just lethal, but Knight's probably not going to connect. Sure. All right, Crater Hoof is crashing in. I'll do my block with the Dryad Arbor. That is going to grow my knight. I don't need mana off Phyrexian Tower or anything here. Uh, that's fine. Okay, sure. I'd like to, I guess, avoid shuffling my deck. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's fine. So my opponent currently doesn't have Boseju available. So, sacrifice this. Find Dark Depths. Age. Target Depths, keep the one with no ice counters. I've got a 2020. 2020, that can be pro green at that. Sure. All right. Are you in chump block mode? You are in chump block mode. Oh my god. <laughs> These draws have been rough. All right, cool. Hopefully I just have them in the Abyss at this point. I probably need to dodge, like, a Lucky Glimpse chain. All right. Dryad Arbor. I don't have time to look up the list and see if it had a second Dryad Arbor. Uh, Dark Depths is, I guess, a draw. I'm just going to attack. Okay. I think that was my opponent looking for Dryad Arbor. We've gotten the... the GGs. Uh, that was a slog of a round, and me wandering around outside for a couple of minutes hunting for that noise in the middle did not help there. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and refresh before I record the next round. All right, um, I'm keeping my opening hand here. It gets a little awkward if this noble hierarch is answered because I don't have easy access to white, and I have to give up the green sun to find another Noble Hierarch if that happens. Ah, Gurdane usually means something like show and tell. Am I knighting now, or am I saving a knight to put in off of show and tell? Probably knight now, so that crop rotation do some neat things if it actually resolves days. Okay. So... I think I just play a green sun. Like, as tempting as it is to just fire off the crop rotation, crop rotation can represent Caracas or... Oh, wow. Okay. Um, anyway, crop rotation can represent Caracas if I need to bounce a creature, or it can also represent um, the other half of my Dark Depths combo. That one's got lots of cheap interaction. Sure. All right. My wasteland is not doing great. I think I just passed the turn. I don't I don't think I do the attack for one. My opponent has shown me a bunch of cheap spells like Daze and Spell Pierce. So having extra mana available is actively a good thing. Alright, are we done? We're done. I will attempt it here. I will just sacrifice a basic forest because. Okay, cool. I didn't see red mana that game. I think I'm going to do similarly to what I did before. I think that was swords out, carpet in, oof is really mediocre, Ramunap's not where I want to be, and then it's like, do I want to play Force of Vigor? I guess there's also things like Blood Moon that I have to think about and respect. But I do like Endurance out. Now Kaya's good here. Probably Ugin out. And Fiend Artisan is slow. 
This hand has lands and spells, but doesn't actually have a real game plan. Um, this is an easy mulligan. <laughs> yeah. I will keep this bitching force of vigor, I think. The, the hand's weird. There's no other way to put it. The hand's just fucking weird. All right. Cavern. On human. I just want my first thing to not be spell pierceable in any capacity. I get more value if I fetch and play carpet and then play hierarch, but then I'm not guaranteed to have mana ramp for next turn. Go and tell is fine. I will put in a knight. Knight will find me Caracas and get Grizzlebrand out of the way. If I play carpet, it's just neutral mana. Play this. Cast a carpet. Go to my second main phase. Yes, make some mana. Go ahead and fetch. Find a Savannah. Load a mana. Sacrifice that. Find a Caracas. I think I wait on activating it. Okay. My opponent's going in for the extra cards anyway. Okay, stuff's happening. Sure. Okay. Big attack is scary. Red. Rax is annoying. Okay. They didn't find extra mana, which is nice. So there's what they got. So this one is about to be sacrificed. I will be bouncing the Grizzle Brand. Okay. Grr. This plus double red sources is a problem. Oh, but I can just arena rector my way out of this, right? One, two, three, four. Uncounterable. Savannah. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, this is just a nickel bolos situation. All right. Yeah. Vote a white mana. Sacrifice this. Find Phyrexian Tower. Uncounterable Arena Rector. Sacrifice Rector. Nickel Bolas. Plus, Roy Sneak Attack. Any reason I need to crop rotation? The Force of Will. Bait, essentially. I guess taking out this matters. I don't really need Phyrexian Tower anymore. It's done its thing. This just attempts to get Force of Will plus blue card out of my opponent's hand and succeeds. This is a two turn clock that beats any past the turn line, I think. Okay, cool. Uh, playing for a trophy. Okay, I've kept my hand here. Oddly, this probably has to be a Bayou because I do care about the black or my boy Grist. Does Grist have a gender? What on earth is this? My person Grist. Ancient Tomb Lotus Petal. Are we show and tell in? Are we initiativing? Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Understood. A little awkward. I can answer this token or not. And it depends what deck my opponent is playing, whether or not it's correct. It's red white initiative, getting the white mana matters a lot. Like having that mana selection matters a lot, but my turn is just objectively so much worse if I just use one mana to swords. I think I'm just playing knight and using all of my mana and threatening merit lodge. Like this already blocks the goblin shaman and means that if they want the treasure, other stuff has to happen. But, like, this could not be an initiative deck. Like, this could be Moon Stompy. It could be a Painter deck. And it's very hard to tell what is correct, given the information that I do have. I guess it also could be, like, Red Green Initiative, or Naya Initiative, even. Okay. Still a little ambiguous, but more likely to be, like, Mono Red Moon... No, oh, yeah, never mind. Red White Initiative. In which case, removing that Goblin Shaman matters a lot. Alright. 
The red white initiative is actually a big deal here because my opponent has things like swords and solitude that can answer a merit lodge. Going all in makes a little bit less sense. Sure. Okay. I think I'm just doing it. So. Crop rotation, sacrifice wasteland. Find dark depths. Copy dark depths. One with no ice counters. Now, they are going to get a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Faithless Looting, to dig for an answer to this, but I think it's correct to just do it now. Some number of Swords of Plowshares touch the Spirit Realm, and Solitude are things that stop it. But I think after a double Fable start, I'm just not winning the fair game. My opponent only discarded one card there. Second Swords is real bad for me. So, like, now my opponent is just running away with the game in terms of mana and resources and assuming they find any initiative creature, that's just going to be disgusting. But I don't think I win the fair game by trying to pivot into this stuff. Um, I expect that I am just basically going to concede this one. I'm not going to concede yet because I can technically just find ways of producing a merit lodge and it will still kill my opponent but uh this is bad so i towards the caves of chaos adventurer which very 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 importantly does not put my opponent above 20. fiend artisan is a 1-1 one, one. not looking super great right now okay sure okay Oh, there's more. F. So my opponent gets a hasty copy of that that also gets to attack in. I get trapped. My opponent will then archives. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. What, I'm taking four, six, nine, either nine or ten damage. Yeah. Okay. Bad. I'm just eating that damage. Uh, my opponent probably kills me next turn. Oh, and an Archon, just just in case. I am... Well, I don't want to grist and mill like a Planeswalker that my opponent sees. I think I am just going to toss in the towel here and not give them extra info. Although if I was going to do that, I shouldn't have played Cavern. Um, I basically have zero cards for this matchup. Like, I can technically play Force of Vigor or Opposing Moxen or something, but that's very mediocre. I just kind of needed my opponent to not have double swords. Like, I beat single swords. I didn't beat double swords. I have no regrets going for it. I have very neat tech for this matchup. But, like, every everything that's technically playable here is very medium. The exile based removal being good against both Arena Rector and Merit Lodge is pretty rough. I think I'm going to run it like I'm just going to run back the main deck when I'm on the play and when I'm on the draw. I have some other options. Uh, this is unplayable. This I'll keep. I'm not super excited about it. Technically, have Blood Boons to be thinking about. I think I am going to grab a Forest with this first one. Even though it can potentially run into some awkwardness later. Oh, there's Mox Diamonds in there. Sure. Ooh, that's a spirit guide to play a turn one season Dungeoneer. That's obviously very good. Wrist. That's not really where I wanted to go with this. But it probably is where I'm going. It is painfully awkward. Because this leaves my opponent with the initiative and I don't have a creature to take it back next turn like they just get to go down the right side fix their draws try to find another initiative creature and we can kind of see the awkwardness of getting forest over savannah here it was fine unless grist happened very much made it not fine even mind sensor is rough for me jk Everything is alright. Yeah. Yeah. 
Selling a crop rotation is a nice boon there. Okay, sure. I'm gonna lose my grist to the Avon Mine Sensor attack. And then hopefully I get lucky with a green sun. Or otherwise get lucky with a top deck. It's also okay if my opponent just doesn't have another creature. But that's pretty unlikely. Sure. That's great value for them. Now they get two more damage in on me this turn. Sure. Go to 20. Uh, Ugin is a terrible draw. I believe to have any chance at winning, I have to do this. It feels real bad, and it misses a huge portion of the time, but I think I've got to do it. All right. Good hit. I make a land drop. I'm still live, but I don't have a lot of outs, and some of my things like crop rotation have become very bad. Take eight this turn. I'm not going to block. I might need that mana. Go to 12. More gas. Rough. Okay. Try to stay alive. Again, the Avon Mind Sensor is real bad for me. Uh, Rector? Does Rector do anything? Uh, the Ugin in hand is rough. I'm probably just dead to Throne of the Dead 3, honestly. I'm not technically dead yet, but Throne of the 3 gets a lot of looks at a Solitude or Fury or whatever. Yeah, there's a Fury. That wipes both of those creatures. 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I am just dead. Well, damn. Trophy run stopped. All right, that'll bring us to the end of the league here. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Eh? Like, scoreboard was good. We were playing for a trophy. I don't know that I actually feel good about this. Like, the, some of the toolbox portion of this deck list was basically dead. Like, I never activated a Fiend Artisan. I think I never green sunned for an oof. I think I never green sunned for an endurance. Never tutored up a Ramu nap. Recruiter of the Guard is slow. Anytime I draw one of these cards, it's bad. I feel like this deck is working harder than it needs to. Like, you have a cool payoff. And, like... This package has had some recent results. It top aided. It was either a Legacy Challenge or the Showcase Challenge. I don't remember which it was recently. Uh, like a Black White Arena Rector build. And like I have cool angles that I attack on, but I think given some of the low power of these cards, plus kind of the low speed that we're seeing here, plus the awkwardness of drawing these. I think means that I'm not the biggest fan of this deck list. Like, this deck is built well. I just don't think I would stake my tournament results on it. At the same time, these games were incredibly interesting and skill-intensive and enjoyable. So I think this falls into the category of, like, I would love to play leagues with this. I would love to bring this to an FNM or, you know, a local 1K or something like that. But, you know, when... You're playing a real event that matters. I, I don't think I would be putting my chips here. Like, there's so much overlap with, like, green-white depths or Naya depths, and I think that deck is just kind of more consistent. And I don't always know that shoving Fiend Artisan into a deck is, is the answer. Love you, Newton. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot. If you have any thoughts about the deck building, would love to hear them. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya.